Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakak Radash. And double honors to the head apostles of the Great Millstone that taught me this truth, and including the bishops on down as well. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Brakatham to all of the rest of the Akim that's furthering this ministry, which we believe we are the 140 and 4,000, and as well as those that do follow, which we believe as they believe too that they are the one third. And it's your brother Laban actually with another video. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna respond to a part of the live that was done. And um Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel, just to say his name correctly, um, he totally demolishes Daniel's the eighth chapter. To be exact, um verse 23 to verse 25 and onwards as he's gonna go into. And without further ado, I'm going to play this video and you're going to see what I'm talking about. And we're going to break this down the correct way. And as I do that, this would be another fine lesson, Lord willing. So now let's play this. 823. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. And in the latter time. When? In the latter time. When? In the latter time. So when y'all teaching, you want to preface it by highlighting that in the latter time times good and in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full uh -huh. a king of fierce countenance a king of fierce countenance this is babylon the great Nate is the coward, right? man. and understanding dark sentences and understanding dark sentences talking about the bible is the dark sentences so he totally as you can see he totally went off on that right there but you don't know that, and I'm going to show, I mean, brothers that obviously are well-versed in the scriptures, you already know that already, but I'm just speaking to those that may not be so versed in the scriptures as we are, and this is where we come in, all right, that's learning this truth. So the thing of it is, like I'm going to say, I'm going to show you how he totally demolished just that one verse alone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to get into the book of um, Daniels 8 and 23, and we're going to read this correctly. And um, again, we're going to give the right understanding through the Spirit. So let's go back over here and let's read this. So as it reads, in the latter times of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents. So who is this king of fierce continents? First and foremost, this is referring to the times of the, um, the ancient Greeks. Now, what you had was is you had Alexander the Great, which he reigned in his stead, first and foremost. And then he passed on, and who succeeded them? The four generals succeeded them, and they took over the various parts around the world at the time. And um, someone that came out of a wicked root, which is mentioned in the, uh, the book of Maccabees. And who I'm referring to now is Antiochus Epiphanes, and that's what Daniel was in 23 and verse 25 is referring to and what he would do um, in the latter times of their kingdom, the kingdom of the ancient Greeks. Okay, so now let me read this again. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents, which that's Antiochus Epiphanes, some would say Antiochus Epiphanes, and understanding dark sentences. So now let's look up this word, dark sentences. So the word is kayada, right? Kayada, which riddle, which means riddle, difficult questions, parable, enigmatic, saying or question, perplexing, saying or question, riddle, dark occurrence, riddle, enigma to be guessed, perplexing, questions, difficult. And um, usage D is the correct usage. Double dealing with having. Why do I say that? Because when you read the book of First Maccabees 1 and 29, it explains when they came at the Israelites with the multitude of the military power that he had back in them after all, after all that he had um, done in spoiling the Israelites, he gave a speech and I'm going to go into that. But before I do that, I want to look up the word double dealing in the, um, the what is it, the, the Merriam Webster dictionary which the term double dealing means action 
contradictory to a professed attitude. So now let's get into the scripture now that I was quoting. And spake peaceably words unto them. Excuse me. And spake peaceable words unto them. But all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the sea and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. So he was speaking kind words just to so that he can bring destruction, just like it reads in the book of Psalms that um, his words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So that's the, the mentality that the Israelites were, were dealing with, especially when you're dealing with the Edomites. And we know this very well now because we've been under them for 500 years. So we, we know this and we see we see this through their uh, the, the politicians and all of that. OK, how they will say one thing, but then do another thing. That's that's the Edomite way. So um, basically, that's what Daniel's eight in verse what 23 is talking about when it talks about the dark saints. It doesn't mean the Bible. So he broke that down wrong. So now let's play some more of um, this this video over here. Talking about the Bible is the dark sentences. Read it again, read it again, read it again, read it again. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, mm -hmm. a king of fierce countenance. So that king of fierce countenance begins with Babylon the Great, no, which it's includes. Not. No, it's not. It's Antiochus Epiphanes. We just went into that. So now, I mean, let me let me just forward this. 10 seconds in, 10 milliseconds in, Salakia. The right, super here. global elites, not your regular peon whites. They don't know a damn thing. Read it again. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Go ahead. And his power shall be mighty. His power shall be mighty. His technology shall be. So as you can see, he doesn't understand the scripture, which most of these guys, you know, they can remember the scriptures and everything, but they don't understand the scriptures. So as it reads in verse 24, right? And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully. Who should he, should, who, who would he destroy wonderfully? The Israelites and shall prosper in practice. And shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Exactly. And through his policy, okay, is when you go into when you go back into the book of uh, Maccabees now, right? It reads, and when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls that were on every side. But the women and children took their captives and possessed the cattle. Then built it the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it strong hold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. And they stored also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. And so they became a sore snit. Right? For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. So that's, that's what was going on at the time. That's why it says, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Why? Because the heavenly father is going to be the one to set this man up to be exalted. And he shall destroy wonderfully, as I've already read to you, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, also he shall cause crafts. I tell you what, I'm going a bit too too far. I'm going to allow Nate to break it down, and we're going to break, like I said, we're going to break this down correctly, because now I'm 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 <laughs> I'm go, I'm getting into the zone now, right? So now let me just fall back a little bit, and let's just watch this video. Power shall be mighty. His technology shall be mighty. Go ahead, but not by his own power. Not. By his own power. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me the precept, Yuri. Hold that. Revelation 13. <laughs> I forgot the verse, but... Two to three. Two to three? Thank you. Need is a character. Revelation man, chapter 13 and verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Mm -hmm. And it took feet. elements from ancient Greece. Go ahead. And his feet 
Whereas the feet of a bear, mm -hmm. he took elements from ancient Persia media, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Yeah, he took elements from ancient Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the dragon gave him his power. Who gave him his powers, brothers? That's the devil. That's the devil. That's the. You know, the dragon represents yes, the devil, but the dragon represents the the Roman Empire. He's partially right, but the the, the right understanding of that is that it's referring to. The Roman Empire as a whole. All right. That's what the red dragon represents. Now, when you read the book of um, Revelations, let's just read that. Let's get Revelations 13. Again, we're going to read this correctly. And we're going to give you the right understanding. Because he's just straight butchering things, man. He, he's just like, you know, like the elder apostles called him years ago, the wingmaster. And that's what he's doing right now. He's winging it. So anyway, uh, this is John the Revelator declaring his visions, which is Revelations 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his, <laughs> and upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. So again, this is talk that this dragon would have these horns on, right? And the beast which I saw was likened unto a leopard, which is the Greeks, which this was the beginning of Esau coming into the power, his first time, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion, right? So what does it mean that his feet was the feet of the bear? Because the Russians are going to be the one to take this man down to his feet. And as well as it reads, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Because England would be the dominant secret force of this society, beginning with the um the banking elite, the Rothschild family, which you know they spawn out of they, they spawn from Britain, although um their family goes back to Germany. But they've done a lot of work spawning from Britain. All right, and is and is by the international bankers that control this system entirely. All right, so as it reads, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So that's again talking about the Roman Empire. The dragon gave him his power. This is talking about the Edomites, how the Roman system came back into existence, and and they reestablish themselves as as uh rome again but they don't call themselves rome they call themselves uh americans they call themselves british and all of the various names among these european nations but when you do go back in the time of um the late 50s you had the um the gathering together of the european nations and on the first of um 58 January the 1st, if I'm correct, they called themselves the Treaty of Rome. Showing you that this is the revival version of the ancient Roman Empire. And that's what the dragon represents. Now, can you say it's the devil? To a degree, you can say that. But to get it fully correct, you would have to say that it's referring to this entire system in totality. All right. So that's all I'm going to read right there. Um, Let's go back in and watch this. Devil. That's the devil. That's the devil. The literal. I'm talking about the spiritual demon, Satan. Except A, E equals MC squared. E equals MC squared. So what does that got to do with anything, man? And the reason why he got the sounds effects and all of that, because he knows he doesn't know what he's talking about, man. And then he's mentioning E equals MC squared. What does that have to do with what you're going into, Nate? Has nothing to do with anything. But see, this guy's just winging the precepts. So let me see if I can fast forward so he can get to the other verses. Understand that? Going back to Daniel. <coughs> Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully. He shall destroy wonderfully. And shall prosper. And he shall prosper. Go ahead. And practice. And he's going to practice. Go ahead. And shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He destroyed us. He destroyed the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. 
Yeah, and the holy people that he destroyed, which was talking about Antiochus Epiphanes, were the Israelites at the time. All right? So when you read from what? From verse 31 all the way down to... Um, from verse 38 to be exact, that's what Daniel's 8 and 24 is talking about. So now let's go back to that again. We're going to go back to Daniel's 8 and 24. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just break it down without going backwards and forwards to the video. Um, just to keep things um, simple. Daniel's 8, and we're going to read this again. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Again, all you got to do is read. First Maccabees um, 1 and verse 31 to verse 30, 39. And that's what that's what that is. Verse 25 now. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. So what does it mean that he would magnify himself in his heart? Meaning that he would declare himself like the Most High. Now, if you look up the, the term um, epiphanies. Just bend me for one minute. He called himself God manifest. That's what epiphanies means. It means God manifest. So again, let's read this again. Through his policy, he also shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. And he shall also stand up against the princes of princes. But he shall be broken without hands. So what does it mean that he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand? Meaning what he would do is, is he would set up the unification of the heathen and as well as the Israelites. And um, he would do away with the practices that the Israelites were keeping. No more keeping the Sabbath days and all of the high holy days that they were keeping. So much so that he turned their hearts away to consenting onto paganism. As it reads in verse 40. So it reads, and as it had been, I'm just skipping down to the point, and as had been her glory, so was her dishonored increase, and her excellency was turned into mourning, which is talking about the Israelites. Uh, moreover, the king Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws. So all of the heathen agreed, according to the commandment of the king, Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto his idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid the burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and the festival days and pollute the sanctuary of an holy people. And set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine flesh and unclean beasts. So all of this, this is what was being done. So they were turning the temple into a place where you could just basically set up all kind of various gods upon altars to worship them. Just for the sake that he can unify all people as one. And it's just like how it is right now in the UK and as well as America, to be exact. And obviously, I speak by these two because these two countries are very similar, you know, and these are the two countries that I've, I've experienced. All right. So in these two countries, you could be any religion you want. You could be a Muslim. You could be a Christian. You could be a Roman Catholic. It really doesn't make a difference. You could be anything you want as long as you don't um, come against the policies of government. It's everything's fine. You know, if you want to be a sodomite, that's fine too. Um, have at it. You could do anything you want. So that's how they were coming. They were projecting that um that idea that basically you could just be anything you want as long as you recognize that we're the ones that's basically calling the shots and we're the ones that's in power. 
All right. And that's why it says again that he what he should he shall practice in verse 24. So he's going to practice his ways because of his power. So now. Verse 26, and the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. And wherefore shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and I was sick certain days. After what I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but not understood it. So that's that's all we're going to read right there. You know, that's basically the understanding of what the book of Daniel's eighth chapter from verse 23 to verse 25 is really referring to. It's just that simple. It's referring to the book of Maccabees. Um, as I was reading to you, the scriptures that I was reading to you in here. Okay, it ain't talking about what's going on right now, it has nothing to do. What's going on with right now? If or it's already come to pass already. So I just wanted to just do a lesson on this right here, just to correct what Nate was talking about. And hopefully you saw um clearly, you know, what was being said in this lesson. And at last it was um edifying as well. So yeah, that's all I got to say with this. I want to give all of the praise and the glory to the most high and his son. Yahweh Bashim Al Shah Bashim Rakakwadash, and as well as I will be um speaking on another false demolish breakdown of neat where he talks about how after the thousand year period is through the edomites and as well as the heathen are gonna are gonna um scheme to return back into power which that's just totally absolutely ridiculous anyway i'm out shalom